It's not every day that I stumble upon a piece of software that legitimately gets me really excited, but today is one of those days. I just found this software on GitHub called Ventoy, which is a program for creating a bootable USB stick. Now, there's many different programs out there that can do this, so why should you care? Well, what makes Ventoy more interesting to me is that it actually lets you write multiple ISO files to a single flash drive. So you could turn that flash drive that maybe you only use to boot Debian off of or rescue disk off of into a Swiss army knife of bootable operating systems with support for non-Linux distros as well. In fact, if we look at their website uh, under the tested OS series, you can see that we have several versions of Windows going as far back as Windows 7. We have a gigantic list of GNU Linux distros and maybe some non-GNU Linux distros as well. Uh, in fact, let's play a little game here for the algorithm. Comment below your favorite distro from this giant list uh, or if there's one on this list that you haven't heard of. I've got a feeling that most people are going to say that Arch is their favorite, but there's a whole bunch of these um, that I haven't ever run even in a VM before, like so many of these uh, on here, like Shark Linux. I don't even think I've even heard of Shark Linux until I saw it here on this list. Uh, and then there's also um, BSD variants that you can boot from this as well. And under other, there's a few different type of hypervisors. So basically anything that you would want to boot from USB is going to be supported. And in my opinion, this is also one of the easiest to use multi-boot tools that I've found that also supports secure boot, which might give it an edge over tools like Yummy that I've used in the past and had some issues with. Um, and when I show you how simple this is to use, it may very well become your go-to multi-boot tool as well. Uh, so to download it, um, you can download it from their website if you want to. They've got um, links here, but uh, I'm gonna show you how to download from the GitHub because this is what I'm going to actually link in the description of the video so that you guys can download it for yourself real easily. So go to their GitHub and then go over here to the releases page. Um, they actually just released a new version seven hours ago. So I guess good time to uh, cover this program. So if we scroll down a bit, you can see the different uh, versions that are available for, well, for different uh, operating systems. So obviously the windows.zip is for the Windows users. The linux.tar.gz is for the Linux users. Now on Windows, this tool comes as a standard GUI program with a very straightforward to use interface. And for us Linux users, we get a nice, simple command line tool with a few different options. Uh, so everyone pretty much gets the tool that they would probably prefer that's most suitable for their OS. Uh, so go ahead and unpack the files. Um, this is what the contents of the Windows zip looks like. So once you uh, unpack it, then you're gonna go ahead and run this exe. Uh, maybe you have to run it as an administrator. Uh, and like I said, it'll walk you through what you have to do. And on Linux, uh, once you unpack the archive, uh, you'll get a folder called Ventoy and then whatever version you downloaded. And then inside of it, you're going to see uh, several different shell scripts, as well as a readme and some other folders. Uh, so let's go ahead and cat out the readme. It'll probably be best uh, for us to actually read the directions before we start trying to change things. All right, so here is the main command. Uh, so you have to run it as root. So you're going to sudo sh uh, ventoy to disk dot sh with the lowercase i, so that's pretty much the install option. Uh, and then you want to pass in the name of uh, the device, the name, your device name for your flash drive. So this is the most critical part that you have to get correct because whatever drive you pass in here, whatever device you pass in is gonna get formatted and all the data is gonna get erased from it. So what I would suggest doing is just opening up another terminal or another tab in your terminal and then run lsblk uh, so that you can figure out what, what the device name of your flash drive is. So I know that um, this here SDG is going to be uh, my device. So the full command that I would use um, is sudo sh ventoy to disk 
I and then dev SDG. And if you run this, it's going to you know ask you, are you sure? Uh, well, let's go ahead and enter my password. Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's telling me that I already have uh, it installed, but what it's going to show you uh, is just ask you, are you sure you want to install it? You hit yes, or I think you could just type Y, uh, and then it's gonna ask you again, are you really sure? Because it's gonna format everything. You hit Y again, it installs. Um, takes a couple of seconds to maybe a minute or two, depending on uh, how fast or slow your drive is. And then as we see in the README, uh, there's also an option to enable secure boot because uh, by default, it's going to do uh, no secure boot uh, or at least no support for secure boot. And it's going to do a uh, MBR style. So if you want to enable secure boot, uh, you would just add S here. And then if you want to enable, um, what is it? The GPT uh, partition style, then you just do G here. Um, now, maybe for whatever reason, you're using GNU Linux and you're not uh, comfortable with the command line. It's actually not that unusual these days because modern just works Linux distros like Linux Mint, Elementary OS, they make it so that you never really have to use the command line uh, if you don't want to. Um, now, while I would encourage everyone to become familiar with the command line, luckily you don't actually have to. Uh, because which one is it? VentoyWeb.sh actually makes it so that you can use your web browser as a GUI front end for this software. And it doesn't even require an internet connection because you're basically connecting to local host uh, using it. So let's go ahead and um, test that out. So we'll sudo sh VentoyWeb.sh. And then it's gonna tell you to go ahead and connect to HTTP 127.001 and then this port. So if I come over here to my web browser and paste this in, bam, I get this pretty much uh, GUI front end. And so I can just select my USB stick and this might be a little bit easier for you to understand if, like I said, you're not uh, familiar with the command line. Um, and then you can come up here to option, and then this gives you the ability to choose your partition style and whether or not you want the uh, secure boot support. So now once you have that set up, um, your flash drive is going to look kind of like this uh, after you mount it, because you don't want to have it uh, mounted when you go to run the Ventoy command or when you run it from the web browser, because it's not going to work. Um, and you also won't have these distros in here, but this is all you have to do to essentially write a new distro to Ventoy. Um, so like you can see here, I've just got the Artix ISO here. I've got a Linux Mint ISO and a Kali Linux ISO. Why don't we go ahead and grab another one from my distros folder? Let's go ahead and add um, Peppermint OS. Let's copy this into Ventoy. Um, so it's gonna go ahead and copy over. Bam, now Peppermint OS is in there, and I guess let's eject it. Uh, and I guess I'll show you how it works. All right, so hopefully this uh, <laughs> filming doesn't end up being uh, too blurry and is clear. So I've got my ThinkPad. Um, there's the USB stick on it. So this is a um, ThinkPad that I'm going to be using to test some, I guess, exotic... Uh, distros or just doing some sort of interesting configs, maybe Libre boot it. All right, so here we'll get closer so that you guys can see. So there you go. That is all of the different distros and we have Peppermint OS, the one that I just dragged and dropped into that folder and it's here to boot. So why don't we go ahead and boot into it. Um, try Peppermint OS live. That's probably the best way to um, demonstrate that it's working. All right, and uh, just give it a moment to boot. All right, so you see the starting up screen.
And for those of you curious, this is a uh, ThinkPad W500. Um, I think it's Libre bootable. I don't know. I just, I got one of these ThinkPads for a uh, really good price. Because the only other ThinkPad I have is my uh, work computer. And uh, I know it's one of the newer ones you can't do those interesting configs with. Uh, so yeah, here we go. This is um, Peppermint OS. Got the um, terminal working. Uh, let's see, I don't think it has NeoFetch on it, does it? Oh, it actually does. <laughs> so yeah. We booted that operating system. I guess why don't we go ahead and boot another one? Might as well. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and shut it down. And again, this is all off of the USB. Uh, I don't even think this computer has a hard drive in it, or if it does, there's nothing on it. Um, let's try Linux Mint. Start Linux Mint. So again, we're gonna boot into the live USB because what better way to show that it's working? And then it errors communicating to TPM chip. But that's fine. And we see the Linux Mint logo. And there we go. Um, oh, I also just realized that I actually do have Ethernet connected, so why don't we open a web browser? What better way to prove that your OS is working than open a web browser? Because of course, like I said, every, o every OS is just a bootloader for the web browser these days. All right, look at that. So we're on linuxmint.com. So yeah, Ventoy, easy to use, multi-boot USB tool. Try it out. Let me know what you think about it.